Welcome back, adventurers, to Let's Play Riven, the sequel to Mist. When last we left off, we had finished reading the journal that was given to us by Atrus, giving us an, a brief history on the ordeal we now face here in the Age of Riven. But what we want to do now is find the person that stole the prison book from us, because we need that to to trap Gin, Atrus's father. Um, some stairs leading down that way, and to our right there's a bridge leading to a chamber carved into that part of the island over there. And then this way is a, is a round chamber in here. It appears to have five pillars at various points in the room, and on each of those pillars are five gold beetles. And there's this giant symbol laid out on the floor here, again in gold, with a star pattern with five books at each of the points of the star. And in the center of the star is a symbol that we've all seen before. A square with a horizontal line through it. I'm sure we'll be seeing more of that as we ex continue to explore the Age of Riven. But over here, there's a there's a gate, but that sa self same symbol that was in the floor doesn't appear to have any sort of means of opening it. But it appears to that this way leads out to some sort of gargantuan structure up ahead that way, and at the top of the ceiling is um something depicting what appears to be a night sky with some sort of ornamentation at the top, in the center. You also note that each of the walls has, um, uh, certain walls actually have what appears to be writing on them. It's that one, that one, and one over there. Um, we'll have a closer look at that writing. Now, if I'm not mistaken, given Gen's, you know, admirable but foolhardy quest to resurrect the Dunny civilization, it stands to reason that the writing here on these walls is of the Dunny, is in the Dunny language. Um, I will be, hopefully, have translation, you know, show you all the translations of, of those, um, text, so that's the one we just saw, and here's this other one. Um, surprisingly good condition, um, this writing, although it does look a bit worn. And so I take it this room has actually, actually been used for quite, you know, occasionally, and also the fact that it's open to the elements would give it a dusty look, and this is the final piece of writing on, in this room in this room. Um, well now that we've had a look at the writing, let's examine these beetles closer. And there appears to be some sort of ring at the base of each beetle. So let's see if we can we can use that. Ah, it's a some kind of mechanism that you pull down the ring and the wings open up, allowing you this kind of giving you this kind of viewing viewing eye thing that you can look into. And each of these beetles appears to be some sort of mural depicting a part of Riven, or at least its its cultural history of sorts. Um, there's a hand with that same symbol that we just saw on the on the floor in the gate, with an open book. You can only assume that that hand belongs to Gen. And to the right of the mural, there are five men all kneeling down, bowed down in, in prayer or worship. So Gen has somehow managed to convince the inhabitants of Riven that he is in fact their god, lord, and creator, when in fact this is completely untrue. But what's more disturbing is the fact that there are cut tr there are trees that have been cut down to stumps, and the and the trees are being treated to this machine here, 
and they're being turned into material. Material creating papers, you know, crafted into paper in order to create new books, I guess. Now this is an ominous scenario because Atrus's whole plan was to maroon Ganon Riven by destroying every single linking, you know, linking book leading back to Dunny. And Atrus's whole supposition was that Gen would effectively remain trapped on Riven for the 33 years that have, that have passed since that time. But given the fact that Gen is clearly trying to use the Rivenese to emulate the Dunny civilization, he is in fact trying to craft a way out of Riven, thus creating a loophole that allows him to escape his prison. Which will make... Hmm... Which would make trapping him all that more difficult. But then again, Atrus said that the art of, of actually creating the books, and, and creating links to other worlds, is... Um, is basically has been lost since the fall of the Dunny civilization. And also remember that from Atrus's journal is that Gen, because of Gen's rather eclectic and, to be fair, disparate writing style, all the ages that he creates, or all the ages that he writes, that he creates the links to thus far, are all inherently unstable. And those worlds will inevit inevitably collapse and, and deteriorate into, into nothing, basically. So we don't yet know if Gen has indeed managed to find a way, has actually managed to create a link out of Riven, although Although he still has no means of getting to Dunny, the only way he can return to Dunny now is, to, is if he actually manages to get his hands on a linking book leading back to, to Dunny. Anyway, that was, that was that mural over there, so we'll have a look at the second beetle now and see what this mural shows. Ah, well this is certainly interesting. At the top of this mural is a, clearly a depiction of Gen, because who else would be be at the top here? And below him are, are again the five men that we saw knelt in prayer in that previous mural. And there are five five groups down here. One can only assume that these each of these five groups represent the guilds. Of Riven. Now, the Dunny civilization was divided into multiple, multiple guilds that um, formed the entire Dunny civilization. You had your book, you know, your bookmakers, your writers, your surveyors, your, you know, builders, and all that, you know, scribes and all that sort. But here we once again have that motif of five. Well, this left left hand area appears to be depicting the Guild of Builders here in Riven, which is, should be fairly obvious. The second one appears to show a guild master handing out papers to some children, which I can only assume is the um, you know Riven's equivalent of the Guild of Writers. Um, this, this third guild here I'm not too familiar with, um, at least it's not entirely obvious from the way that this is depicted. Uh, there are two men, there are six men here, and two of them are holding knives. Um, but we don't, not quite obvious, um, what this, this particular guild is. Uh, this one is more straightforward. Um, the Guild of Surveyors, because this this guild master is has a scroll and an apparatus here, and he's looking at what appears to be what might actually be a map of Riven. 
So this is actually quite useful in that it gives us a very rudimentary idea of the topography of, of the Age of Riven thus far. Because Atrus was unable to know Riven's topography, because A, it's been 33 years since he was last in Riven, and B, the gateway image that also serves as the link to the Age of Riven is rather distorted due to the fact that the Age is inherently unstable. And finally, the fifth image shows a tree that's been partially debarked and papers falling from the sky representing pages and two guildsmen down here collecting them up, which can only be the Guild of Bookmakers, which means that even though Gen ca cannot technically escape for back to Dunny, he is, and this appears to show that he is still not, not changed his course upon trying to resurrect the Dunny Empire, or at least a, a dark shadow of the Dunny Empire built in his own image. Now let's see what this third beetle has. Well this image is certainly interesting. So here we have another depiction of Gen, once again. Uh, that wasn't meant to be a pun, but anyway. Um, it appears that he, you know, depicting himself as some sort of god and creator by having fire and stars and the sun and the heavens and water and everything. And at the bottom of the picture is a man falling into, falling into stars, along with a book. Now we already know of this as Atrus falling into the star fissure, and just before he linked through back to mist, with the mist book that was in our possession until we linked through to the island of mist previously but this appears to show Gen that uh, uh, this appears to be showing that Gen deliberately cast Atrus into the star fissure in order to kind of bow the Rivenese into submission and show that he is this all powerful deity or something like that but alas this was actually the reality is is that Atrus escaped Gen by using the star fissure to keep the mist book out of his out of his grasp because Gen wasn't you know brave enough to throw himself into the fissure as Atrus was but if this had not happened if this event hadn't happened, we would not be here. So, certainly interesting indeed. Now we have the fourth, fourth beetle. And this one appears to be depicting the moment that Gen first arrived here in Riven. And there you see all the Rivenese, all, all now in prayer, surprised that an outsider is somehow ma magically teleported to this world because to the Rivenese, you know, a man appearing out of thin air could quite possibly be seen as magic. Of course, Gin, being as high and mighty as he is, apparently sees no reason to, dis you know, to dispel this, this ideology, which was rather unfortunate for the people of Riven. And here we have a fi this fifth and final beetle that clearly depicts Gen's twisted view on, on writing and the art in general. And here you see that Gen is writing in a blank book um, and it's showing all the, you know, the sun, the stars, the heavens and animals and people and plants and stuff all flowing out from the pen in, in the book. So, yeah, there was any indication that, you know, that Gen believes that he is in fact creating the ages that he is writing in, this mural certainly depicts it, but of course, as we all know, that is simply untrue, as proven to us by Atrus. So, that was this chamber, that, that was the chamber's interior. 
but if you rem remember there was a button at just outside of the chamber so now that we've had a look inside let's see what this button does so we'll just press the button and see what happens something appears to be moving ah it's the chamber so it's so it rotates in some sort of dais or pedestal or, or something like that an oatress would certainly be rather interested to see how this whole mechanism works and it shows you that the the people of Ruben are actually quite adept or at least Gen was able to to teach the people of Ruben how to you know how to construct stuff like this because you couldn't really write something like this into an age as proven by Atrus's stone ship experiments um, just have a look at that again and you'll see that that door that used to be over there or over back that way is um, is now over here showing another chamber of some kind um, so if we rotate the, the chamber again and wait for the mechanism to, to do its thing press the button again because there's no point in looking, looking through that thing. I believe each of these points where the, that circle is is where the, um, the five beetles are on the pillars. So the pillars are actually hollow. That's interesting. Oh, and this is rotated around again. And we can re-enter the chamber. And here the gate is over here now. And there's another door. There's a chamber here with a door and another gate that we currently cannot get into at the moment. So I'm supposing that this chamber is the first of of many puzzles that we will be eventually solving in this age because since um, you know, since Gen did teach everything that Atris knows, um, you know, he may have somewhat of a perch hunt for um, obscure and rather rather opaque puzzles, but this one seems fairly straightforward, um, at least at the moment. So if we reset the chamber back to where it was, um, yeah, we'll, we'll return the chamber back back to its original configuration. Um, so we'll eventually have to find a way to to see if we can open those gates. Now, before we head over that way to the bridge, we'll head down these stairs. Um, there's a rock over, a smaller rock island over there. Um, there's that chamber that we'll be going into much later, or just in just a little bit. And there's a gate over here that's padlocked and can't open. It. Um, but there appears to be another one of those flint, small flint daggers built in the style of, of that giant dagger we just saw. And it appears we can, we can crawl under the gate. That's interesting. Um, that's actually quite handy, actually. Don't have to find a key to unlock that padlock. Ah, and over here there's, there's another chamber carved into here. Um... That, that shows us that, that leads to the, to the chamber that we were in previously. So eventually we'll have to manipulate the chamber and these two the two entrances in order to solve the puzzle of the rotating chamber but for now um, we'll continue exploring over that way. We'll come back to this puzzle later. So when we return adventurers we shall make our way down towards that other chamber. Until next we meet adventurers.